Feeling blue that Game of Thrones is over? Well, check out George R.R. R. Martin's original masterpiece in paperback and leatherback form. It is the featured item of the day. Hey everyone, this is Kevin, your entrepreneur, and I'm sorry, I know people don't like this style very much, but I kind of need it. I need it because there is an article that the New York Times wrote called, um, What Dara K Must Do to Save Uber, and by the way, they are writing his full name. I'm sorry, I am not used to saying it yet. One day I will figure it out, but kind of like how some people still haven't quite figured out how to pronounce the last name of the CEO of YouTube, this is, uh... This one's going to take a little while, I think, so uh, I'm going to have to hear it enough times before I can officially say it with confidence and boldness. But there, I have been kicking around two ideas for video. A video on what the new CEO needs to do for the company and an open letter to the CEO for me personally. Now, that will come on Monday. That will come on Monday because um, I do need to be practical and you know, report these other things first. But Stephen Hill of the New York Times actually wrote a very good article on the subject, and I'm going to read the full article. I know that's not always the most exciting thing in the world, but I'm going to be commenting on it throughout, and we're going to look at what his suggestions are, and I'm going to throw in my two cents on the matter. So I thought this was like a good opportunity. So let's look at this. So um, Uber's board has picked Derek Hay, leader of the online travel company Expedia, to replace the embattled chief executive Travis Kalanick. But the company's troubles run deeper than Mr. Kalanick's flubs and scandals, and new leadership alone won't be able to right this distressed ship. And uh, let we'll comment on that first, because that is actually absolutely true. In fact, I had to make a video addressing some things because many people pointed out when Travis Kalanick got fired that people were acting like Uber was instantly a better company by that virtue alone, but a lot of the problems still held. And I argued that the fact that he wasn't there, it boosted morale, which did make it a better company. But I conceded that, yes, it was just getting rid of him was not the only solution. And it's the fact that a lot of people signed a petition to keep him in the company shows that they are actually a lot of people who support him and did not like the fact that he left. And they still work for the company. And there's a lot more of them than there was of him. So, um, yeah, let's continue. If Mr. K is to succeed, he'll have to do what his press has refused to do. Confront the reality that Uber's business model simply doesn't work. While Uber has become popular as a taxi company for the digital age and has been valued at nearly $70 billion, more than Ford, GM, or Tesla, the company has been losing money faster than any technology company ever. It lost nearly $3 billion in 2016, plus another billion or two in China, and it has already lost over $1.3 billion in the first half of 2017. And as you have watched, if you have watched my channel, you know this is absolutely true. Uber, for being valued so high, does not make a lot of money. I would argue the same thing with Amazon, but again, the difference between Amazon and Uber is that Amazon has stock. Amazon has stock and investors keep investing into it and that keeps the valuation up even as Amazon, the company, loses money on every sale. Uber doesn't even have the stock, so it's interesting that they are still valued at $70 billion in the eyes of the public. I think most people should be smarter than that. Moving on. The dirty little secret of Silicon Valley is that 7 out of 10 venture backup back startups fail because they never become profitable. The company Mr. K will take over is on track to becoming one of those failures. That's in part because Uber never figured out how to offer taxi service at a lower price and still earn a profit. Consequently, it has become stuck in a trap using its venture capital funding to subsidize at least 50% of every ride to cut fares and to try to gain a monopoly position that can drive out the comp position that can drive out the competition out of business. As a result, the more customers use Uber, the greater into debt it goes. Now, I'm going to comment on this because this was one of the reasons why I wanted to read the whole article and discuss it. Um, I think Uber actually had figured out how to make money. When Uber first started out and they first started doing Uber X and stuff, it was cheaper than a taxi, but every but they made more money and drivers made more money. And Uber made a lot of money off taking 15% of the ride. Every time Uber has cut the rates drastically, they always increase their fee. It's always interesting how Uber claims like, oh, well, the cheaper fares, you will do more rides and you will make more money. And yet, somehow that doesn't really apply to us, so we're going to raise our fee because, you know, we're going to lose money when we do this. 
Uber had figured out how to make the money a long time ago. They basically were just cheaper taxis, and they used us as the worker bees. And we owned the cars, and we owned the maintenance. And, yeah, basically, Uber acted like the middleman. But the the whole subsidized at least 50% of every ride, that factors into the fact that the driver turnover rate got super, super bad. It got seriously bad when the rates went down. And now a lot of people, and this is one of the reasons why I still keep the referral links below, they just need $500, so they sign up, they get the bonus, and they leave because it's not profitable in the long run to stick around. When it was profitable in the long run, they didn't have to do boosts as much. They didn't have to do all these bonus bonuses like you know you do 20 rides you get 55 extra dollars like these promotions and these boosts and these incentives to get drivers out there because they're otherwise not paying them enough to be on the road is what's costing uber most of their money and china but they cut out they got out of china so china's not a burden anymore but you know anyway let's continue because um i'm actually getting ahead of myself on some of these topics um <clears throat> Uber can subsidize rides for only so long. At some point, investors want a return on their money. They want to get to the stage where they can profit from the company's IPO or they turn off the spigot. Uber is standing at that pre precipice. Precipice, I'm sorry. More than anything, that's what the recent revolt by Uber board members has been about. Uber's initial investors and board members were willing to look the other way as scandal after scandal erupted because the business model seemed to be on track. But now some investors are publicly saying Uber is worth far less than $70 billion, and the Uber board is offering shares to new investors at a discount. So there is a lot of truth to that. Admittingly, when it seemed like they were within reach of their goal, the investors were happy. In fact, one of the reasons I think the board members let Uber keep cutting the rates is because of Sidecar. Sidecar went out of business. When Uber started, they didn't have a lot of competition. In fact, they really didn't have any competition after the taxi industry, and they're, they're not too difficult to beat in competition in terms of pricing and efficiency. But then Lyft came along, and then Sidecar, so Uber cut the rates. And when Sidecar went out, it was kind of like someone, someone there was like, hey, we got one of them. It's working. Let's get the next person. And they kept trying they aggressively went after lyft every time there was like a major drastic price cut other youtubers they they would comment i think this is their last effort to put lyft out of business but it never happened and to some extent i think they're still hoping it could happen but it can't so but the investors got like a little taste of it we got rid of one of them Let's get rid of the other one and let's let's charge whatever we want. But it's not working. Heck, the taxis are still around. They need to make money without putting anyone out of business. And that might and now the investors are worried because as people who see the numbers and heck, I see the three billion money losing a year, and even I'm kind of like, oh, what the heck? I'm sure they see it more, and that's why they finally started to stand up and speak out. Continuing. These are troubling signs. Every startup must one day fulfill the market's demand that it turn a profit. But Uber has never figured out how to do that. While ride-sharing in some form will probably survive, it's more likely that without some drastic changes, Uber won't be around three to five years. I agree. Moving on. Mr. K, you know, I'm just going to call him Dara. Dara must avoid the mistakes of his predecessor by accepting the pivots Silicon Valley speak for the desperate changes troubled companies make to reassure their venture capitalist funders are not the answer. None of the pivots Mr. Kalanick tried, like on-demand delivery of food and packages through Uber Eats and Uber Rush, packing in more passengers via Uber Pool, and expansions into China, India, and Russia improved the bottom line. This is actually very true. Um, none of these things helped Uber. Uber Rush got dismantled, China, and it got out of China. India, Russia, it's struggling there. I think the only reason Uber Eats is still around is because they get, like, a fee on top of the food. So Uber Eats potentially could be a lot more profitable. But they, because when Uber Eats launched, it launched without tipping, they missed a major and pivotal moment to get drivers onto their service. 
And of course, for the first year, they subsidized the deliveries for like 99 cents. That's when I was using Uber Eats. Then they raised the price. I stopped using Uber Eats. And I've only done two Uber Eats deliveries, and I don't intend to do any more for the time being. Reserving. Why? Because none introduce efficiencies or change the basic underlying economics of the taxi industry the way Amazon did with retailing by getting rid of brick and mortar stores through online sales, which, of course, I have to chime in. Amazon doesn't make money either. Maybe that's not the maybe that's not the direction you want your company to go. I don't know. Um, confronted with this reality, a desperate Mr. Kalanick set his sights on the leading drivers and their wages from the expense sheet through the development of autonomous vehicles. But it is increasingly clear that this is another huge gamble that Uber cannot win, at least not in time to save itself. Most experts, including those previously bullish on self-driving technologies, such as the editors of The Economist magazine, have recognized that autonomous vehicles are at least 20 years from fruition. We will continue to see various experiments and autonomous service vehicles used in very limited settings, but Mr. Kalanick's promise of a self-driving transportation grid dominated by Uber is pure science fiction and i also want to add one of my things against uber on all this is that i don't think they wanted autonomous vehicles either because once they actually own the car uber is so stingy on charging a passenger a five dollar cancellation fee you know when they had to do the gas the maintenance not only would they be spending way more on this stuff than they would have on the drivers but they would have to be way more expensive than a taxi and then the taxi industry would probably actually do a lot better if Uber got into this industry. So, yeah. Continuing. Uber's only chance to survive at this point is to actually make its taxi business work. If he's to have any chance of doing that, Darrow will need to make major changes. And this is where he starts. those changes are being listed. And I will comment on, I think he makes, he makes six recommendations. First, he should parlay Uber's popularity among its users into a significant increase in fares. Well, <laughs> that speaks for itself, and I agree. Second, he should follow the recommendations of Eric H. Holder Jr., the former attorney general, to root out the company's destructive bro culture. I believe Uber has attempted to do this, but I think he needs to get very serious about it. Third, he should find a way to repair Uber's poor relationship with its drivers, since the company will need them for a good while longer. One study found that only 4% of people who sign up to drive for Uber are still driving a year later. Uber burns through drivers as fast as it burns through its investors' cash, which I want to add, and as I mentioned earlier, when you burn through drivers at that rate, you are also burning through your cash because you need to hire new drivers and give them incentives to do so. Fourth, Dara should drop foolhardedly futuristic ideas like self-driving or self-flying vehicles, the latter was Mr. Kalanick's latest brainstorm, that have no chance of success in the near future and are a waste of resources and attention span. I love it. The New York Times says this. New York Times, I know I've basically made a lot of fun of print media, but you know what? They are established and they've been around and even they're kind of like, yeah... Fifth, he should shut down Uber's foreign operations everywhere except London, where it has had a degree of success, which I also agree with. I mean, you it, here's the thing. Business or basic economics has always been you open a shop, and if that shop is successful, you open a second shop. Uber expanded tremendously before even really having that first shop be successful, and now all the shops are losing money. And while I have never been one to campaign or champion lobby whatever the term you want to use is the idea that if something's doing poorly you have to amputate your arm to save your body because i think layoffs are very bad and do nothing but hurt the company the way uber went about it was so foolish that they have no choice but to do it now and it's the only way they can save the company finally he should head off the coming backlash over urban congestion by cooperating more with local officials to use the company's tracking technology to reduce the horrible traffic, much of it caused by Uber and its competitor Lyft, that is plaguing cities. That would mean sharing driver data so cities can track traffic flows and create congestion zones like the zones, like the ones in London and Stockholm. 
I don't have a whole lot of knowledge in that area, so I'm going to let that one slide, but it sounds reasonable. If Dara follows this blueprint, the company has a chance of surviving. If not, Uber will burn through the remaining estimated $6.6 billion in cash and go out of business in three to five years, and he'll be its final chief executive, which uh, I didn't realize it was that low. I thought they had like $9 billion, but I guess, yeah. A few months ago, they had $9 billion. Now they have $6 billion. So anyway, that's the article. And you can read the whole thing below if you want to read it yourself. Um, the reason I wanted to read it out loud and to comment on it is because that was a very well thought out article that addressed not only the company's concerns, but the driver's concerns. And one of the things that definitely stands out about it is that the drivers are still important to the company. Travis Kalanick acted like the drivers did not matter. One of Dara's biggest things is going to be the drivers will need to matter again because they are the lifeblood of the studio. It was like that day when Disney decided they were going to shut down animation. And Roy Disney was like, no. Animation is our lifeblood and he fought to keep it. And when he did that, yeah, they produced a black culture. But they also produced a great mouse detective, a little mermaid, a rescuer's down under, a Beauty and the Beast, an Aladdin, a Hercules, a Hunchback of Notre Dame, a Mulan, a Tarzan, and so many, many, many more. That when you think about it, yes, gutting the animation division would have killed the company. Long before we got star they got Star Wars, it would have just that's the heart of the company. Right now the drivers are the heart of Uber, and it's nice to see someone acknowledging that. Because so many of these articles are focused on potential IPOs and businessmen and even engineers that the drivers have been very much left out of the conversation. And I'm hoping articles like this bring the drivers back into the conversation because what's good for the drivers is good for Uber. But what do you folks think? Um, if you're still here, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. But what do you think of the article? Do you have any additional recommendations? Keep in mind, he already addressed rates. Um, comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy the videos I make, consider becoming a Patreon member for as little dollar a month or five dollars a month will get you exclusive videos or buy and subscribe from the Great Media Universe store. If you want to try driving for Uber, it seems like now could be the time to do it. Use the referral link below, you'll get a nice little bonus and I will get some support for the channel as well. As always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.